when we look at a periodic table of the elements, besides the element symbol and the element name, a couple of primary pieces of information jump out at us, and one of them would be the atomic number. This would be the whole number that's in the block for each element on the periodic table. This atomic number tells us how many protons are found in the nucleus. And if you recall, the protons are the positively charged particles in that central core. What this atomic number does is it helps to identify what the element is. For instance, any atom that has six protons in it is an atom of the element carbon. Any atom that has 92 protons in it is an atom of the element uranium. So it's sort of like the social security number for a given atom. It also helps to determine what chemical and physical properties that given element is going to have. Now the atomic number can also in some circumstances tell us how many electrons are present, not just the number of protons. If atoms, when we have atoms, they are electrically neutral. There's no charge to them. And because we know that protons are positively charged, if they're electrically neutral, that must mean that the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. And so when you have a neutral atom, and again the atom itself must be neutral, then the atomic number will also tell you the number of electrons. The other number that we find in most periodic tables besides the atomic number is a mass number. And the number that you find on the periodic table is actually the average atomic mass. Uh, what the mass number is for a particular isotope, it helps to identify how many neutrons are going to be present. The neutrons are what are responsible for the existence of isotopes that is atoms of the same element that have different masses. And these neutrons are found in the nucleus alongside the protons and so the neutrons having no charge but almost the same mass as a proton, if we take the number of protons plus the number of neutrons we come up with this mass number. And the mass number will be a whole number since we are taking whole number increments of protons and neutrons here. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that are going to have different masses. This difference in mass is due to differing numbers of neutrons in the nuclei of different atoms of the same element. When we write the name of an isotope, we usually write the name of the element followed by a dash or a hyphen and then the mass number of that given isotope. So for instance for neon there are two different isotopes, neon-20 and neon-21, indicating that one type of atom of neon has a mass number of 20, while the other one, neon-21, has a mass number of 21. Ions are atoms where that balance of protons and electrons has been upset. Ions basically are electrically charged atoms. Ions can result when atoms either lose electrons, in which case they become positively charged because now there's more positive protons and negative electrons. These are also referred to as cations. Or when an atom gains additional electrons, in which case now there is an excess of negatively charged particles, and so overall net charge is negative. These are also referred to as anions. And so when you have an atom that has a charge listed with it, the charge tells you two things. First of all, how many electrons are being gained or lost. The sign tells you whether the electrons are being given up, um, in which case it would be a positive charge, or they are being gained, and that would be a negative charge, and then the number tells you how many are being gained or lost. So when we write shorthand notation, the element symbol goes in the center, and if you think of a square being drawn around that element symbol, at each of the four corners you can have a number written. And at this point we're going to look at just three of those four corners. When we get into chemical formulas we'll look at that bottom right corner where you currently see nothing written there. In the bottom left corner, the brown number, we have the atomic number for the element. Remember that the atomic number tells you how many protons you have. In the top left corner where the red number is, this is your atomic mass number. And remember that this number tells you protons plus neutrons. In the upper right corner where you see the green number, this is the ion charge. 
Remember that the charge tells you if there's an excess or a deficiency of electrons. If there's an excess of electrons, it'll be negative, negatively charged. If there is a deficiency in electrons, then you'll have a positive charge. And the number that's written tells you how many are in excess or deficiency. If the number is just one, sometimes you'll see it written. Other times you'll just see the negative or the positive sign written. If there's no number written, you assume that the number is one. But any number other than one will be explicitly written.